Welcome and thank you for attending today's Encourage Better Organization at Home. My name is Holly Graff. I'm a certified professional organizer, a member of NAPO, which is the National Association of Professional Organizers, and I've been a member since 2004, so quite a while. I love organizing and I love working with parents and children. And how I got into this and in association with Chad is my daughter had attention, has attention deficit disorder, the inattentive type. And I always say I got in organizing because she was organizationally challenged. So there's so many different helpful hints and tips and things that we can do to help them. And, um, and we know they need, need help along the way. So one of the first things that I want to cover is just keeping it simple. When you organize with children, I find that, you know, when parents tell me all the things they want them to do or to do, that they give them so many directions. So, for example, I was working with, with one uh, student, and the, and the parent says, well, we want her to do the dishes, do this, do this, do this, and then she can go up and do homework. The only thing she remembered was go do homework because there was too many things. So if you keep directions of one or two directions at a time, it can be easy and making it easy for them or cleaning their room or organizing their room. Keep it to a small area or part of the room. When you just say, go clean your room, and I know I would tell my daughter that in the early stages, I'd come back in an hour and she'd be sitting in the middle of her room reading magazines or books. And she finally said to me, creating world peace would be easier than me cleaning my room. But if you keep it to small things in short increments of time, it really works so much better. So, but say if they're a teenager, just pick up all the jeans in your bedroom. And either if they're dirty, they go in the wash and they're not all dirty, but some just fold and put on a shelf. So keep things easy, one item at a time, all the sweatshirts or all the books or all the garbage put in the, in the trash can. And using a timer, a post-it note works too, like uh, my daughter, and I would have her write it because you want the more that you can buy in from them really help. What we would do is um, look at all the items that were around on the floor in her bedroom. So she'd want to do one post-it note for uh, sweatshirts, one for purses, one for books, and then you just take one at a time, maybe put the others behind the door and then take out one at a time. And that's the one thing she's working on and she remembers. Uh, younger kids don't say, just go pick up your toys. I mean, there's so many kinds of toys, it's just too much for them. But say, if you have um, a toddler, they could just pick up the dolls. Another one that's older can pick up all the Legos and put them in a container. So you get the container, they just pick it up, put it in, put it, up, put it in. Look at organizing with the child's perspective. You know, so many people, you know, we're standing up, we're taller, they're just little. If you get right down, what can they reach? You know, sometimes I find like drawers, dressers with drawers, you can't see what's in there. It's the hidden, the hidden box and then you pull it out. Some don't go smooth. They don't pull out nice and easy. They fall out or things get in there and they just get everywhere. But say you put up some open shelving in a closet or, um, and you have some bins in it and say, underpants go in one or undershirts in another, socks in another. It's so easy because they can even help after laundry. Here, just put away your whatever item it is and they know where, where the, the bin is and they can put it back in the bin. Basket and bins work really good. They work great for books. Here, pick up all your books and just put them in this basket, you know, and it's really nice. Later on, you can get, if they want to get more detailed or you do and put them on a book bookshelf, that's fine. But for right now, get them in a bin because that's the best thing to do. Same with with, with um, teenagers, like for makeup or different things. Like so, there's so many little bins now. I mean, you can get them pretty reasonable at the dollar store or Target or Walmart and they're um, plastic so they can be washed out and it's easy. It's easy to do it. And then they can bring it out to the kitchen if they want to put it on and then put it back in their bathroom or the same in drawers that you open up in a bathroom. Like you can have little bins in there for their hair clips or headbands and, you know, one for toothpaste and the toothbrush. So it's real easy and they know exactly what bin that they're going to. Family organizing. This is a really great one because you're all doing it together. 
end of the day, you have like a five or ten minute cleanup. And really, it is that quick. And say you have the living area where kids have been playing. And But say you do it and you have a family fun time. And you do it before maybe there's a little reward, before there's a dessert for the night or reading, reading time. So I was like variety, fun, and colorful. So it's not the same every night. So you can give one person, one of, like say, yeah, young daughter. Okay, time, pick up all the baby dolls and put them over there in their, their little space or their crib area or whatever you have little for them. You have another one that can pick up all the books and just take the books and put them in the bin or put them on a shelf. Maybe mom picks up all the blankets or if there's little blankets there and she folds them and puts them together. Everyone just give everyone one specific thing to pick up and put away. You know, and this way they're organized. And as they see, there's there's some new habits forming. So specific things go in specific areas and they're all specific, you know. It really takes about five minutes. When you do that, it's a five minute thing. It's fun. Everyone's doing it together. It's not one child just going to the room and doing it by themselves. Everyone's doing it. I mean, almost with kids, they get to be like, who's the fastest? Who can get it done fast? You know, when I say variety, fun, and color, it's variety because it's never the same thing. Don't ever give the same thing to the same person. So this way it's variety. Make it fun. Put some music on to do it too. Color, you can have bins that are different colors. Okay, all the books go in that blue bin over there. Sometimes those tubs work really nice, those bigger tubs. I've seen those like at Walmart that um, you can put bigger items in, like the big trucks can go in there or balls can go in there. And, you know, for what you have, look at what you need to do it. Don't, you know, I see people go out and buy tons of organizing bins and baskets and not specifically what they need it for. So wait till you see what you need it for. And even you have the kids come come all together too and say, you know, where where could we put all these books? What would be great for these to be put into? Make it rewarding. You know, nothing like a hard job without no reward. So, you know, and it doesn't have to be big monetary rewards. I mean, for children, reading a book together before bedtime and, and then you alternate, like if it's more than one book, you have, if you have multiple children, you, maybe they each pick out a book and each night it's a certain book or you take turns and you decide or it's so many chapters for each book if you can keep them straight. So um, a healthy snack or a good dessert, something like that is always fun for kids. Sticker, poster for jobs well done. You know, you could have little posters up for, for children and they each get a sticker and they can pick out a sticker. One thing I'm going to say about that is that, uh, that I know I worked, worked with a mom and a family and they had two, two young sons and she wanted to put a poster together for them. And because they had their morning things that they had to do before getting ready for school, then they had after school and then before bedtime rituals. And she wanted to get something on a poster so we remember they remind them of what to do. So we got some poster board. I bought poster board for each of them to have and some stickers and markers and things. And they wrote up their own poster. So we kept it simple. We kept it easy things. Not You're not going to put 20 items there for getting ready in the morning. So there would be maybe five or six items too. So that was working great. And then they'd get like stickers. Every time they do it, they put a sticker behind too or their parents would give them a sticker. Plus they had the posters up. I think they put them in, they had a hall right by their kitchen. So they had them up on the wall so they could see them all the time too. So they'd run over there and they'd check it. And remember, they made these posters, not mom or dad. They wrote them, they printed them, and they were great. Well, when I came back after a month, the posters were not up. And she says, well, it's not working great. They're not following. I go, where's the posters? She says, well, I took them down because I wanted something neater. And then she opened up like the pantry in the kitchen and there she had like two eight by 10 papers that she rewrote it and printed it and put them up. Well, they weren't the posters that they wrote. And I said, well, that's not their posters. You know, now you rewrote it and it's printed. It's not their handwriting. She goes, oh, oh. So she went back. She still had the other posters. She took them out, put them back up. And in a week she said they're back to it. So the more that they can get into it and write into it, the better. For older children, allowances work good. Work towards a book, dinner, pizza, something special that the family can do together. 
I see, you know, in the morning when children are getting ready for school, like it's just a big, everyone's rushing around. The more you can be proactive. So the night before, make sure backpacks are by the, the door or if there's lunches, what's going to happen? What's going to be in the lunch? Is it in the refrigerator ready to put in their, their lunch um, bags? And, you know, so if you, if you have that extra 15 minutes in the morning, that extra 20 minutes, you know, that just works so much better. When you look at that whole big picture, it's too much. You got to break it down into small, small areas, even smaller parts of the house or a counter. When you look at a counter, don't look at the whole thing. That's just too much for anybody. But say maybe a paper size of it and you organize just that one, an eight by 10 and then the next eight by 10 area and just go little by little. Keeping things in perspective too is just, you know, setting goals that are unrealistic completely sets when your child up for failure. You know, let's get all the whole house cleaned up tonight. You know, that, that would just be too much. Even a whole room, and it, especially if it's a bedroom, like sometimes, you know, it's like a disaster in there. It might take a week, but every day you just spend a little bit on certain areas and certain specific items to be picked up. And like a teenager, I would, I recommend too that they can do two or three things every night. So we d did it when I've done it with students where I'll say, okay, what are the items in your room that you have on the floor? And we'll go up and look. They picked out the items and then the parents, one parent helps says, okay, one of the items is dirty dishes because evidently she took dishes up there and junk. So, so I said, okay, so mom, give her a, a, a trash bag or a bin and bring down the dishes and the garbage. That was one item. Dirty laundry was another. She had to bring it down. And then she got to pick the other one, whatever it was, books or something. So she had three things. And I said, it's literally going to take you 10 minutes. It took her less than 10 minutes. And she came down and she goes, what? And then the next night it was something different. So, you know, it's always working towards it, you know, that little by little. And then they're knowing kind of sometimes maybe instead of just throwing that garbage on the floor, you know, she didn't have a trash can in her room. So, so they got a trash can for her. always having a bin and it can be in your garage by the back door somewhere where you have donations. So the more that you see, you know, I, I tell children if there's, how about do you have, do you have duplicates or things that you don't want anymore that somebody else could use, make it, you know, every week or every other week you take it and you take your children together and you take it to wherever your donation center is that's near you too. So ask yourself or your child, when's the last time you use this? And, you know, I think children, there's so many toys that children have if you rotate them out. Um, if you have a bin with a closed top, um, put toys in there maybe they're not playing with and switch them out with other things. And maybe when they, it comes back, they go, oh, I remember this. I love to play this game or whatever it is. And sometimes it makes it fun again, you know. Our uh, first question comes from Sabrina. So um, she asks, how can we mitigate oppositional behavior? I currently have a child who is taking over two hours to tidy the garbage off a two foot dresser top. I think too, the more that we come at them for coming at them like, you know, negatively, get that stuff off your dresser. You know, maybe there's a different way to do that. Say, what's going on here on your dresser? You know, like, I guess you make it more of a question back to them. Well, I know it was the right spot for this and this and this. And I think too, the same thing with the dresser top is that you're looking at the whole thing and they're looking at the whole thing. And the same thing is, is that let's, what are the specific things on that, that, that uh, dresser top? Is it makeup? Is it books? Um, I don't know, garbage, paper, Whatever it is, I think try that, the post-it, you know, have, have her make a, some post-its of what are all the items and a, a different post-it for every single item. So um, you might come up with 10 post-its or she might come up with 10 post-its because if she can write them and write them out. And then um, she can put them on the wall somewhere. She can put them on the, on the door and start picking one at a time. So maybe do two, two a day, just start picking them up. And maybe she needs some bins for some things that are on there too. So if there's assorted makeups or pens, maybe she needs some little bins to put each of those in and then 
you go together and you can pick out some bins. You know, maybe you need four little bins. I think it's really breaking it down, see what's on there. Um, is there certain times it's getting on there? Is it when she's emptying her pockets or her purse or her backpack and putting it there and getting down to it? But but I think the approach is you really need to make the approach where, and I know we're, we're all used to that. Say, what's what is all this stuff? This is a mess. And just saying, oh, what's going on here? You know, and turn it back to a question to them. How, how do you think we can go about this? You know, and and uh and doing like that. I think too sometimes with you know, other things are going on with oppositional defiant disorder because they've got school, they've got routines now, they've got social media. There's so much going on. So if you need to get professional help to um, a psychologist, so maybe you need like even a professional organizer. I work with a lot of students and I come in and something, some simple things like that. And then you can tell them the same exact thing. And I know I've I'll tell them something, how about this working? And I don't demand a certain thing. We look at what's the right approach and get some input from her, from her or him and find out what's going on. But I find the parent will say, I told her the same thing. And, but now you're, they, you told her and they're doing it. So just comes from a different person that it might work a little better, so. Great, thank you. Um, so our next question also is about teens. Um, teens with busy schedules. Um, so uh, kids with sports um, that like they have sports like five days a week. Do you have any advice um, with that? Um, yeah, because we have children with multiple children with multiple sports. So I, I would say the same thing is make um they can have a little list or I mean, there's such nice bright colored posters now. And I mean, they, they don't have to be real big. They have some five by seven size, maybe everybody gets a certain color. Someone has bright yellow, bright green, bright orange, and on it, ask them. So now you're getting their buy into it of what do you need to bring to your sports? What does, what nights do you have it? Maybe at the top, you know, they, they put their name and what sport it is, say it's um, soccer or something. And what do I need to always bring? What do I need to have? Is it in its area? Is it in its spot? You know, so that Maybe you have a certain designated area somewhere close to the door in your garage or whatever that everyone has a big container or something that all their items can go in. So right away when they come back, it goes in there or does it stay in the car somewhere or where where is it going to be, you know? So maybe they put all those items, what they need, that they, they need their ball, they need their, um, I don't know, sneakers and then I guess if things have to be washed put them in the washer and did they get out the clean clothes for the next time that they go the next night or something or how many times do they wear them before it gets washed you know like is there time that it goes in the washer or day it goes in the washer put all those little things down but just do short little um bullets that they can do short little bullets so and I guess if they have multiple sports that they'll need two little, do two little post-it type things, you know. So one is basketball, one is soccer, you know, and then every every child has their own color so that they can set it up. But put all those things, what are all the things that they need to take? What are all the things that have to come back? What things need to be washed and put back in the container for the next day? Whose job is it to get it washed? Are they put in there, like if they go in the hamper or the, the bin, make sure that gets into the laundry room and is mom doing it for everybody or do they do their own? You know, all, all those things can be put on there so there's no question. Well, I thought you were going to wash it. No, I was going to wash it. I thought you were going to bring it out. Well, then it comes out, then they, here they are nice and clean. They can fold them and then they can put them right back in where they're going to take them the next day. So, so our next question is, um, it, it relates to giving your child a few extra minutes uh, to get things done. So what do you do if your child uh, stalls during those extra minutes? Yeah, I guess it's how long does the, the task really take compared to what you think it should take and what the child should take and how, how old is the child that's doing it, you know? Um, and is it just one item? Are you breaking it really down into one item so that, you know, when, I, when I, I've had students, when I tell them, okay, here's two things you're gonna do, um, 
And they come back and they go, well, that was too quick. Well, what's the catch? That was too easy. No, that's, no. You want two more? Here's two more items. So um, I think if it, maybe it's too much, they, they're just stalling because they don't know what to do. They're just in their own mind. It's just kind of like where, you know, it's easier if stalling just to read a book and sitting down than to get the task accomplished too. So, you know, for homework, I found, you know, people say, oh, it takes them so long. They just sit there doing homework. But did they get a good snack? And get up and run around outside. I mean, that stimulates the dopamine and gets them going and energize them. I find that really helps a lot too. And make sure a snack has protein in it. This protein is going to give them energy. Maybe give them too, don't give them too much time. So you have an hour to do this. Maybe it only takes five or 10 minutes to do it, you know, and, and maybe you have a, a timer and, and get a timer that they like. There's a time timer. That's a really great job, great resource instead of like I know I if I put a, a timer out for my daughter and it would go tick 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 that really bothered her she did not like that sound and then ding went really loud at the end so I found out timetimer.com and it's quiet and it's it's more of a visual because you find out what kind of learner they are too are they more visual auditory kinesthetic that the hands on that they got to do it so the time timer is nice because you, they're different sizes and you can set it up and like for time, time just for children, no matter what age, through teenager, just, you know, it's, it's out there. You can't put a, your, your hand on it. But with this time timer, what you do is say you set 15 minutes and you, you move it down to 15 minutes. Well, it's got um, a red area. So when it starts going, it goes up and up and then they can see, oh, oh my red area is almost gone. I got to get it done by that, the time, you know, and then it, it comes up. So whatever you, I think it goes up to an hour. You can set it for an hour or whatever, but doesn't make loud noises or dings, but you, you're seeing visual. Um, the next question is, any tips for helping third graders with ADHD managing school papers and um, for parents managing um, all of their kids' artwork? I think, you know, at least the one thing good about third grade is you have one teacher. So you can kind of work with that one teacher. I think there's so many neat little file folders now that you can have. I mean, you can have one they, that has, um, I've seen them where they, they're kind of see-through. The more see-through, the better. Something that's easy too. But you can have like multiples and then they can go right into a binder or sometimes binders too big and awkward. But you can have maybe, Whatever the, if they have history, if they have math, and what are the subjects that they're doing? And then I tell you, kids don't have time in between when it switches from one subject to another to do all the things. But every night you can go in and what we do is my daughter would take them out and we'd put um, on each folder what it was. Like the yellow one was always for, say, math or something. One was for reading and the papers went in there. And then when she needed them later on or once they get older you can either not keep them if they're tests and they're needed for something else you'd keep them if they're not or depending what you want to keep you know uh, but then you have like maybe four different folders for each different subject and things just go right in those subjects and right away when they know in their backpack or they bring it out in their desk they know you know green always is for math or my math things or something so that you can kind of do it like that or they can all go together and then just at each night, maybe you can help them kind of sort them out too and you sort them out together of what's what in there and what things have to go back. You maybe you always have a folder, a red folder. I like bright red because red is urgent. Those are things that have to go back to the school. Something has to be signed or some homework and whatever it goes back, especially third grade. With It's nice. Pretty much you have one teacher. But some have different teachers. Um, and artwork, yeah, there's so much artwork that we want to keep um, for our little artists. And I think I just a small <clears throat> bin that you can, I mean, for oversized papers or whatever size can fit in there, can go with a top on it and can go under a bed. And just um, you can keep artwork in there. And then what I just say is that after like a school year, Go through it, not when your your stu your child is there. <laughs> Go through it and keep the best of the best. Um, and if whatever things you do keep, put like a I like to put in like a dryer sheet, 
a dryer sheet seems to keep away like some some bugs like moths um some of those little bugs that want to get in there so um put that in with papers and even you can put it in with some other miscellaneous things um you talked a little bit about uh organizing time and getting ready uh the night before so how do you help a child that procrastinates and um, has a hard time getting to either school on time or getting to appointments on time? Oh, just build in that extra time, you know, build in an extra 15 minutes. And is it, are you taking them in the car or, you know, say the appointment's at one o'clock, maybe you say, we have to be there at 1245, you know, and use that time timer so they can see it or a timer that can go off, that we need to be ready by this much time. And do just checkpoints along the way, you know. Um, maybe do a trial run, like how long has it taken them to get ready in the morning? You know, what what is what are the things along the way that's the stall points, you know? Is there books in there that they're reading? Like that was one thing with my daughter. She could be reading all the time. So we end up doing where books come out maybe by the breakfast so when she's reading she can read breakfast breakfast when she's reading so what are the you know kind of look at see what you can find out what are the stall points if you ask them they won't know so you have to just kind of watch and see but build in some time look look you know take a trial run um you know are they already ready for the appointment are they dressed already did they you know have a snack or what's you know are you bringing a book with you when you go to the appointment whatever it is and have all your stuff ready there too. So hopefully that could help. So our last question is, um, if you have any tips to help a child with severe ADHD to organize themselves, so say that they're um, forgetting what you're asking them to do in the moment um, while you're telling them, any advice for that? Okay, and I don't know what age group we're talking about there, but I think the one thing when you've lost them, you're giving them too many directions, you know, um, and just really remember to break it down, you know, break it down into the smallest little steps. And that, you know, if, if, like I said, if you're telling them, okay, you need to go to your room, you need to pick up everything on the floor, put it away, clean your bathroom, um, hang up things in the closet, bring out the dirty wash, and then you have time for TV. The only thing they'll remember is I have time to watch TV. No, I think when you're just you're just telling them so much stuff like that too, you just gotta. Um, I mean, I know I know it is like they can just look at you like you're a zombie. Like, what are she saying? And it could be even just simple things. So really break it down. Like, if you can just say, um, I'm gonna have you just do this one thing. I mean, right away they say one thing. What's the trick here? You know, they think you're tricking them or something, and you're not. But you you just you know to say you know I'm gonna have you go to your bedroom and get all the dirty clothes and bring them to the laundry room, you know, whatever it is too. And whatever it is, just really break it down so it's so much easier. You know, some things for laundry even as small, as young as little children can be. I think one of the, the easy things that I've found that work for a lot of children too, especially dirty clothes and stuff, because they don't know, what, they have a hamper. Have you ever seen a hamper? Hamper's like the top of it, you open, you're, do, you're down into the dark pit or something. <laughs> but if you get some couple laundry baskets, like I always got a white laundry basket and then a colored laundry basket, like maybe a blue or whatever color. And you have them and they're in their room somewhere where they can stay out. And they know right away, all the whites, Go in the white thing. All the, I mean, they're now you've already teaching them how to sort. All the colored laundry can go in there. Then you tell them, bring me all the, bring me your basket with the colored laundry and bring it, you know, the colored clothes, and bring it into the laundry room, you know. So little things you can even help them right from their little, you know, and do that. And I find that works with a lot of even older kids. You can start it too because now it's not going on the floor. They know a spot where it goes. It's right out. You don't have to hide it into a closet. Just put it somewhere where it can go somewhere in a corner or somewhere, you know, that it's easy to put things in there too and can bring that too. But um, yeah, just, um, I mean, I think ADHD med medicines, that's going to be for every person to decide with them, their child, their doctor. Um, I think it's the one one area that I know for my own daughter, 
it helped like a hundred percent. It's the difference from not knowing what to do. And, and even now that she's 30, one day she forgot it and she says, Oh my gosh, mom, my head, I felt like I lost my, my head. I didn't know what I was doing. And she knows herself, you know, and she does, she's on herself, but it really can help them just think a little bit clearer and just get through some of that, um, haziness and different things, it's a decision you decide with your doctor and finding the right one. But there's a lot of information that Chad has on that too. So thank you so much.